Hello everyone, welcome to my The Young and the Restless Homies official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. According to The Young and the Restless spoilers, Sally Spectre's career may be about to change direction. More specifically, it could be time for Sally to return to her fashion roots. Sally has been attempting to start her own interior design firm for what seems like an eternity, and she hasn't had much success. Although Sally teamed up with Chloe Mitchell, it's evident that Y&R isn't interested in providing her airtime. Sally has recently befriended Otter Charles, who appears to be her new best friend. Could Sally get engaged in Audra's wedding planning as part of the show's effort to unite these two characters? That depends on whether Audra accepts Tucker McCall's marriage proposal, but there are good grounds to believe she will give in sooner or later. Audra has broken her rule about keeping her heart since she has actually fallen for someone this time. That's probably a bad idea given that we're talking about Tucker, but Audra may have to learn the hard way. It's difficult to believe Tucker and Audra will have a long-term love story, but they might make it to the altar if Audra accepts Tucker's ring and agrees to marry. If that happens, Audra will require an exquisite bridal gown. Where would she look for one? Marchetti does not appear to be an option due to the strained relationship between Audra and Summer Newman. Fenmore's also appears too stuffy for someone like Audra, who meet a vibrant, distinguishing wedding gown that is as unique as she is. It's easy to see Sally rescuing Audra and designing the perfect gown for her special day. Sally previously made the perfect wedding gown for Victoria Newman, and she was known for her daring, eye-catching creations while on the bold and the beautiful. Perhaps this began as a personal favor for Audra and evolved into Sally's resolve to return to fashion as a vocation. It would be good to see Sally ditch all of her interior design projects, which have never felt quite appropriate for the character. Sally has the potential to take over the fashion world once more, beginning with Audra's unforgettable wedding gown and the subsequent online buzz surrounding it. Our forecasts point to Audra and Sally's friendship resulting in some exciting narrative developments, so we'll keep you updated on all the shocking news. According to the young and the restless teasers, Sally deserves a real chance to shine, so might Y and R give her the opportunity to return to fashion and do what she does best. Daniel enters the foyer, and Devon summons Daniel to his office. Devon expresses a need to speak with someone before everyone else enters the workplace. Daniel instructs him to lay it on him. Devon says he'll never be satisfied about Daniel and Lily's relationship. Daniel nods. He understands. Devon says Daniel came straight and maintained his word, which he appreciates. Daniel claims he does not need accolades for giving Lily the truth because he cares about her and always will. Devon warns Daniel that he cannot return to Lily even if he recognizes his error. Daniel believes Lily is amazing and respects her, but he has an opportunity to reclaim his family and doubts he will regret it. Devon says he wants to make sure Daniel never believes Lily should give him a second opportunity. Lily is seated on the patio, working on her tablet, when she goes to get a coffee refill. Heather enters into the coffee shop, and their gazes contact. Christine enters the dining area and approaches Danny. Danny jumps up and kisses her, telling her she is beautiful. As they take a seat, he inquires if she received his message, which may have been too corny. Christine chuckles and said she feels like the happiest lady in the globe because Danny Romilotti left her a lovely voicemail. Danny thinks he is the luckiest person at the table. Christine believes she will be able to clear her schedule for the next few months, and if his invitation remains open, she would love to accompany him on the first leg of his tour. Danny kisses her hand. Amazing. Victoria inquires about Claire and her mother's sleep patterns. Did they really sleep? Claire claims she went upstairs after her dream and was able to get some sleep. Nikki asks about her dream. Claire tells her grandmother that she fell asleep on the couch and imagined what her life would be like if she had grown up as a Newman. Nikki smiles and says, That must have been interesting. Victoria claims it makes her sad. 
Claire apologizes for upsetting her mother. Victoria is not unhappy with Claire, but rather outraged with the lady who took everything Claire earned and claims Jordan can no longer take anything from her. Nikki hopes Claire had a good dream. Claire claims it was. The majority of it was wonderful, with the exception of a few terrifying times when Jordan sneaked in and transformed it into a nightmare. Nikki gets it. She is shocked Jordan wasn't too busy haunting her nightmares to visit Claire. Jordan's reign of terror is ended, according to Victoria, and her only option now is to haunt them. Nikki expected to feel at peace and in control after confronting Jordan, but it wasn't so easy. Did she forget who they were dealing with? Victoria claims that nobody could have guessed Jordan would poison herself in front of them. Claire admits she can't help but wonder whether things should have gone differently. Victor walks in, grateful that everyone is safe. He claims he would not have let them go there if he had known what that woman was up to. Victoria said it will take them some time to get through it, but they are fine. Victor informs Nikki that he understands how it affected her physically and emotionally. Nikki agrees with Victoria, stating that they only need time. Victor claims Nikki never went to bed last night. Nikki claims she didn't want to wake Victor, so she slept in the guest room. Victor says he heard her enter the guest room and attempted to open the door, but it was closed. He says he understands she's trying to avoid talking to him. He wanted to be with them when they faced Jordan so he could take charge. Nikki says Victor is correct. When she returned home yesterday night, she didn't feel like talking, and Larry, her bodyguard, had already told Victor the rest of the tale, so she didn't have much to say. She needed to forget and clear her mind for a few hours. Victor expresses dissatisfaction with the decision they made. He didn't want the three of them to confront the homicidal maniac alone. Heather approaches Lily as she walks back to her table. She welcomes her home. Lily claims Heather welcomed her home when she visited Daniel's apartment and walked in on their warm, cuddly family moment. Heather nods and says she's delighted Maddie's feeling better. Lily must have enjoyed seeing her. Lily cuts her off, saying she isn't doing this with her and doesn't want to hear it. Heather successfully obtained her desired outcome after leaving town. Congratulations. She claims she has nothing to say to her. She returns to her table. Heather follows her and claims there was no premeditation in what transpired between her and Daniel, and she never wanted to harm Lily. Lily claims Heather never intended to hurt her because she never thought about her at all. Heather never considered Lily, and she is convinced that it was deliberate. Heather's affections for Daniel returned before she even left. She saw that he was the man she desired and wanted him back. Heather replies she can't deny this. Heather benefited from Lily's absence to care for her daughter since she was able to focus on Daniel immediately away. Daniel tells Devin that he does not expect to have another shot with Lily, but he wants to make the situation more comfortable for her. Devin says that's what he's attempting to accomplish, which is why they're having this conversation. Daniel says he doesn't want to seem nasty, but none of this would have happened if it didn't feel natural. He claims he never intended to hurt Lily. Devin claims Daniel never intended to harm Lily, but he did. Daniel should keep his distance from Lily, as she does not need to be reminded of his past actions. Daniel promises to try his best, but they reside in the same building. Devin is aware of this because he owns the building. It was a mistake to believe that would work out. According to Daniel, they both work in the same building. Omega Sphere is a division of Chancellor Winters. Is Devon considering getting rid of both Omega Sphere and Daniel? Devon claims it had crossed his thoughts. Christine insists on traveling in first class with Danny on their tour. Danny believes that a true rock and roll experience requires taking coach seats, staying in flea bag motels with terrible beds and driving in lousy vans and buses rather than flying first class. He describes it as an experience, similar to a cabin trip on wheels without tents. She'll enjoy it. Christine needs to double-check her schedule, since she suspects an unexpected change. Danny chuckles, claiming she drives a hard bargain. Christine shrugs, take or leave. Danny smiles as he takes her hand. He offers her first-class travel, 
but promises to bargain the next time. They kiss. Christine suggests to Danny that they forego breakfast and get a motel. Danny believes that's an excellent concept. He leaves the table. Christine smiles and grabs her phone. She sends Nina a message. I can't see you in a couple hours after all. You'll be glad I tell you why. Talk later. She looks up as someone enters. Phyllis claims poor Bug is alone. But might she have been duped? Christine expresses gratitude to Phyllis for her concern, but confirms her well-being. Phyllis describes Christine as brave and inspiring. She sits at the table and tells Christine that she doesn't have to pretend. She could declare that she is as unhappy and lonely as she deserves. Christine smiles and replies, whatever you say. Phyllis believes Danny is on tour to get away from her and Christine, which she hopes will chill him out. She plans to attend at least one of his gigs. After all, changing environments can be highly helpful. Christine smiles when her phone vibrates with a notification. She advises Phyllis that she should enjoy it. Phyllis invites Christine to follow her on social media, where she has hundreds of other fans. She did not want Christine to miss out on all the excitement. Christine looks over Danny's message to her. Room 427. She tells Phyllis she needs to present it to her. She tells Phyllis to take care of herself, exits the dining room, and goes upstairs. Phyllis smiles and claims she always takes care of herself. As she watches Christine up the stairs to the suites, her smile fades. Claire asks Victor how he wanted things to go with Jordan. She's conflicted about how it went. Victor said he wanted it to finish definitively so that no one would have to worry about that crazy woman again. Claire agrees, stating that they both felt the same thing but had different views on how to present it. Victor adds he wouldn't mind if Jordan had rotted in hell on that basement floor, where Jordan had plotted to kill him and Nikki. Victoria claims Jordan brought the poison into the room in an attempt to kill Victor and Nikki. And it was her decision to swallow the poison when the tables were turned on her. Claire says it did not work. Nikki regained control, which still impresses her. Nikki claims she couldn't go down to Jordan's level and let her die in front of them. Victor doesn't see why Nikki wouldn't want that. Nikki explains that she didn't call 911 because she wanted to, but because she couldn't live with herself otherwise. Victor claims Larry contacted him as the police and ambulance arrived to transport Jordan to the hospital. He is outraged that Jordan may escape from the hospital and harass them once more. He'll contact the hospital and see how Jordan is doing. Hopefully she's not doing well. He leaves the room. Victoria wonders if Victor was correct. Should they have prevented Nikki from contacting 911? Nikki believes that second-guessing oneself is futile because it is irreversible. Claire asks Nikki if she regrets letting Jordan live. Nikki claims she doesn't. Jordan sees death as an easy way out. She must endure life in prison. Claire claims it's true, but Jordan previously burned down a prison, killing everyone who was there. Wherever she goes next, she will not stop until she obtains what she wants. Nikki says they'll have to do whatever it takes to keep that from happening. Daniel believes Steven is making a bad business decision and asks if Lily will have the last say. Steven says Lily has the final say, but if he had to get rid of Omega Sphere for Lily's sake, he will. He claims nothing in their contract prevents them from keeping the Omega Sphere section and replacing Daniel, and Steven will always prioritize his family before his business. Daniel claims that he and Lily had been through similar experiences in the past and survived. Devin claims that this time is different. Daniel cheated on her with his child's mother when Lily was dealing with an emergency. Daniel says he will always be remorseful about it. He claims Devin did not prohibit Billy from returning to the company after his breakup with Lily. Devin claims he didn't have a choice because Billy is Jill's son. But Daniel is another matter. Daniel wonders what the bottom line is. Devin says he won't know what happens with Omega Sphere until he talks to Lily, and Daniel will be the first to know. 
Heather sits down and tells Lily that she made it sound like she was waiting for Lily to leave so she could draw Daniel into a love trap. But that was not the case. It caught them both off guard. Lily chuckles and says she is certain it did. Heather claims that nothing would have transpired between them unless Daniel also wanted it. Lily admits she is aware, and she holds Daniel fully accountable for his decisions. Heather apologizes for causing Lily distress, and she knows Daniel is equally remorseful. Neither of them saw that coming, and Daniel made it clear that they needed to keep their distance until he could speak with Lily in person. Lily believes it doesn't matter how many times they've been intimate, the fact that they did it at all is important. They shared their wonderful news with Lucy and Devon, which changed everything. Heather replies she has nothing further to say. Lily claims she doesn't want Heather to say anything because she didn't want to talk to her in the first place, but Hater follows her to her table. She says she understands why everything happened between her and Daniel, but that doesn't make it any less painful. Heather says she understands. She has also had her heart broken. Lily claims that this isn't simply heartbreak, but a double betrayal by them both. She and Daniel have a long history, including a failed marriage in Vegas. However, their relationship has always endured and she expected it to. Heather adds she has no doubt that is what Daniel wants as well. Lily shook her head. Friends do not do that to each other. She claims she welcomed Heather back to Geno City and immediately secured her a job at Chancellor Winters, and that if Heather had any respect for her, she would have declined. She tells Heather to stay away from her and not talk to her. She doesn't want to hear an apology because it will not absolve her. Heather made her decision, and she is making hers. Heather says she believes Lily will fire her. Lily says she is unsure. She has not made a decision yet. She exits the table and prepares to exit the cafe. Daniel enters the coffee shop and runs into Lily as she exits. He asks how she is doing. Lily smiles warmly and says she's wonderful. She leaves the cafe. Christine approaches Danny's apartment that he rented. The door is open, and she enters, pleased as she notices flowers and candles everywhere. She thinks it appears that Danny is attempting to seduce her. Danny replies that is the plan. He presses a button on a remote control, and music begins playing. He hands Christine a long-stemmed rose, and they kiss and dance quietly. They soon fall into the bed and begin to undress. Phyllis comes up the hallway and hears music coming from behind their door. She presses her ear to the door and listens. Nikki apologizes to Claire for snapping at her. The three of them need to be stronger and closer than ever. Victoria claims they are bound. They're all a little stressed right now, so no apologies. Victor steps in and takes his seat. He has awful news. Jordan is healing and will shortly be sent to a maximum security prison. He asks Nikki whether she understands why he is upset. Nikki questions why Victor is blaming her for Jordan's death. Were they supposed to let him die in the basement? That would make them as inhumane and evil as Jordan. Victor said he could not think of a better way for Jordan to die. She should have perished on the basement floor by her own hand. Nikki believes Jordan should have a lonely and empty existence behind bars with nothing else to worry about but how she failed to destroy the Newmans. Victor believes Jordan will flee again. What next? Nikki claims this is the punishment she deserves. Victor grumbles, saying there's no point in debating this more. What's done is done. He hopes the three of them can forget their last experience with Jordan. Claire admits that while she dislikes admitting it, she wishes Jordan had left. She understands wanting Jordan to suffer but she'd rather know that Jordan will never pursue them again. She wouldn't have shed a tear if they had sat there and watched Jordan's poison do its work. Victor could not agree more. He is relieved that it is over and Jordan has left their lives. He thinks the jail system will keep her behind bars this time. Maybe they understand what they're dealing with. He adds the next time he suggests something is a poor idea, people should pay attention. He gets up and exits the room. Heather informs Daniel that Lily told her she felt deceived not only romantically, but also in Daniel's friendship with her. Daniel nods. 
He claims he and Lily have been through pretty much everything since they were teenagers, but they've always maintained their bond. He thinks they can remain friends, but it is up to Lily this time. Heather hopes Daniel and Lily can stay friends. Daniel apologizes for his conduct and betrayal. Heather should not have to deal with the consequences. Heather claims she deceived Lily, who was kind to her when she and Lucy returned to town and hired her at Chancellor Winters. Lily later reimbursed Heather. She says confronting Lily was difficult, but she doesn't want to waste time feeling sorry for herself because she isn't the harmed party. She claims Lily has every right to be hurt and angry with them both. Daniel thinks Lily sounded quite understanding when he told her about it. Heather reports that Lily was caught off guard and had not yet digested the situation, but is now beginning to do so. Lily expressed anger during their conversation. Heather does not believe they have witnessed the full impact of Lily's reaction to this. Lily enters the office and sits at her desk. Steven inquires about the incident and expresses her mood. Lily claims she ran into Heather at Crimson Lights. Heather inquired for Maddie's well-being, as if she prioritizes others over herself. She stated she didn't want to talk to Heather and walked away. Steven nods. Good. Heather, according to Lily, followed her into the terrace and apologized for everything, saying that she and Daniel had not planned it. She claims she had no idea how angry she was until she saw Heather's face. Devin nods. He understands. He says she had to try not to be angry about things she can't change. She has to let go. Lily asks why she should let it go. Devin thinks it isn't worth her time. Lily claims she has plenty of time and energy to be unhappy about Daniel and his new stupid girlfriend. She will, however, move on, as she always does. She moans and says it's terribly painful. Devin asks if he can do anything to help her get through it. Lily lifts her eyebrow. Any suggestions? Devin suggests shutting down Omega Sphere and letting Daniel go so he doesn't have to be in her orbit every day. Lily admits to thinking about severing Omega Sphere and letting Daniel go. Devin suggests they could also get rid of Heather. Lily admits she has fantasized about making Heather wipe out her desk, pick up her final payment, and leave, but it would be irresponsible and disrespectful. She claims Daniel created Omega Sphere, and it's doing well. Heather, as much as she hates to acknowledge it, is a good attorney who can help the company. Steven nods. Unfortunately, she is a good lawyer. Lily insists that he tell her as her business partner, not her brother, whether she should suck it up and put on her big girl panties. Devin insists that they do whatever it takes to keep Lily engaged and happy. Lily believes that the term happy may be overly broad. Daniel tells Heather that they both feel awful for Lily and care for her feelings, but they will deal with whatever happens next together. He says Heather, Lucy, and him are a family again, which he never believed was possible. So they need to focus on that and not risk losing it again. Danny and Christine kiss on the bed as Phyllis listens from the door. Phyllis appears unwell as she hears the music in Danny's room. She walks away, hurt, till she comes to a stop with a calculating expression on her face. Phyllis looks at the fire alarm and pulls it. Strobes flash, and an alarm goes off. Phyllis catches her finger on the alarm and shakes her hand. She runs away, smiling and sucking her finger. Victorian expresses relief that Victor has calmed down again. According to Claire, Victor did not appear to be calm. Nikki says he'll settle down, even though he disagrees with how they handled the Jordan situation. Claire claims Victor was correct. The incident is now behind them. Nikki believes the difficult event brought them closer together as a grandma, daughter, and granddaughter. Claire agrees with Nikki. Jordan can never take that away from them again. Nikki says they may not agree on the outcome, but they faced it together. They did beat Jordan. The three women hug each other fiercely. So what do you guys think about this update? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my videos, please press like. And subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.